everyone, welcome to a new video and a new day. If you missed my last video, then you should definitely go check it out since this is going to be a continuation of it. That video just got too long for me to feel comfortable continuing to add on to it. So this is going to be part two of following this 1940s pattern. So if you want to see part one, then definitely check out that link in the upper corner or in the description box. It shows some of the process of making the blouse from this pattern, which looks a little something like that. In today's video, we are going to be making the play suit portion of this pattern, which I'm really excited about. I think this is such a cute design and I really hope it's as fun to make and as flattering on me as I envision it will be. As you will know if you saw the last video, this is pattern number 2752 in size 16 by some unnamed mail order brand from the 1940s. This pattern was factory folded when I got it, so all the pieces are intact and in beautiful condition. I've already cut the pattern out from some crappy quilting cotton and now I'm going to assemble the pieces and make a mock-up and ensure that this fits me before moving on to the real garment. The real garment is going to be made out of this beautiful yellow cotton which is covered in little fish and then I have some white buttons to go with it as well as some matching thread. I'm going to try and follow these instructions pretty closely today but we will see how it goes. I'm probably not going to update you too much while I'm working on the mock-up just because I don't think that is super exciting, uh, but if there's anything noteworthy to mention then I will definitely mention it. Uh, but I will take you through most of the process of making the final garment once we get to that. Since I'm already running a little bit behind today, I'm just going to dive right in. And the first step is to make the darts in panel 6, which is the waist front. It also wants me to gather the bottom edge between these perforations. As I said in the last video, this pattern is unmarked, so things like gathers are marked with perforations as opposed to actual markings. Um, this was before the age of the printing press, at least for small companies like this one. After doing the gathering and the dart, it wants me to sew up the side seams and the shoulder seams. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Do you see how many perforations are in this? How am I supposed to make sense of any of this? I'm trying to figure out which ones are dart, and I think this one is meant to indicate a dart, but it's one of several dozen perforations on this, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think I'm going to assume it is, and so it is one, and we shall see if I am wrong later on in this video. <laughs> So I got all of the darts marked and pinned. Um, I also marked pretty much all the perforations onto the material. I'm not sure which ones are actually necessary just yet, so I decided to put them all on there. And while I was ironing the bodice pieces, I went ahead and folded the center front line inward, uh, which it tells me to in step three, I think. But before sewing these, I'm going to go get the mail, because I'm pretty sure I heard a thunk, and I think it might be shoes. Unfortunately, it was not shoes. But I did get a pattern in the mail, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And speaking of patterns, my second pattern with McCall's is actually available online right now if you're interested. I'm going to do an announcement video as well as a blog post where I show you the costume in more detail and talk a little bit about my thought process for designing it, but if you can't wait for that, then please feel free to buy it now. I will leave a link in the description box. So the first pattern I purchased is for a 1940s style dress. I have a couple patterns like this, but none of them are actually in my size. So I decided to get one that was properly in my size, and I'm really looking forward to making this. I love the tailoring of 1940s dresses, and as I said in the last video, I'm trying to expand my vintage themed wardrobe, and I think a dress made from this pattern would be a wonderful addition to it. The person in the display picture is also wearing saddle shoes, and I have two pairs of saddle shoes that I bought from Royal Vintage, so I feel like I can totally capture this look, except for maybe the hair, because kind of hopeless at hair. This looks like it has been used and it also looks like we have some more in-depth instructions. So hopefully all of the pieces are there and we can figure out how to put that together. And then the next pattern I purchased is, I don't see a date on it, but this is a New York & Co pattern. I love 1950s skirts and I love the fullness of their skirts, but I find them really impractical to wear because they get caught on things and they get in the way. So I'm trying to find patterns that have a similar silhouette but don't have copious amounts of volume and require large quantities of material, especially for summer when you're warm and you don't really want to be wearing three yards of fabric around your waist. So I thought this would be a really cute dress for summer, and I'm probably going to make videos on both of these dresses. This is from a different seller, but 
I thought I'd show it to you guys anyway. This is a 1940s evening dress from Butterick, and I love this pattern so much. I really like the bow front. I wasn't going to order this, but I had it on my watch list on eBay, and eBay sent me a prompt about it that it was ending soon. So I set my highest bid for like $8, and I was positive that someone was going to outbid me, but no one did, so now I have this pattern to follow as well. <laughs> So I got all of the darts sewn and they actually look pretty nice even though I didn't aim to do a perfect job with them. I also ironed the darts as well as the top portion of the shorts. And now it is time to gather the front panels down and then I have to do up the side seams and the shoulder seams. Annoyingly these patterns never tell you what to gather this measurement down to so I'm going to try and use the waistband as a guide to help me figure that out. Uh, speaking of the waistband, this is the most excessively notched pattern piece I've ever seen. There's one there, there's three there, there's one there, there's two there, there's two there, and there's one there. Isn't that wild? I guess it makes sense considering that the notches have a lot to indicate, but I just thought that was funny. So I suppose if these notches go there, then this notch must go here, which means we're gathering this down to about three inches. So I'm going to do that, and then I shall do up the side seams and shoulder seams and report back with my progress. So I went ahead and sewed the shoulder seams as well as the side seams and now I'm reading their next couple of instructions and they have to do with adding the buttonholes and the buttons as well as a facing around the neckline. Now I'm not going to bother finishing my mock-up to this degree, I'm not going to sew buttonholes, I'm not going to sew in facings, nothing like that. I will deal with that when making the final garment. Uh, for the mock-up I'm just going to trim a half inch off from the neckline as well as around the arm side to imitate what the neckline will look like when the facing is sewn in, but I'm not actually going to make a facing. They also recommend using bias binding to do this, but since it has corners, I think it would look a lot cleaner if I drafted an actual facing made to fit the dimensions of the neckline. So I'm probably going to do that before making the final garment as well. And then after that, it wants me to sew the waistband on and gather the center back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then the rest of the steps are about the collats, which is really exciting. So it zoomed me through a bunch of steps there, and I'm going to explain them in more detail when I make the final garment. This is just the mock-up, so I'm sort of figuring it out on my own, uh, and then I will update you guys when I actually have it figured out. I end up doing the, the crotch seam, the inseam, and the side seams, and this actually fits me surprisingly well. I did sew the side seams with a quarter inch allowance instead of a half inch allowance, but there is room in the hips. This is not fitting me super snugly or anything. Also, it is supposed to rest up higher, so it shouldn't give me like this bulgy pulling that you're seeing there. So I'm probably still going to add a little bit of room to the hips, but I'm pretty happy with that. And it fits over the butt too. 1940s pants are never going to be the most flattering, but I really don't think these are too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these onto the bodice as it instructs me to do, and then I will show you what it looks like on. So I got the pieces sewn together, and I just realized that I made the variant without pockets by mistake, though I did cut out the pockets, and they have been sitting over there the entire time. I forgot to implement them since they don't mention the construction steps to make the pocket version until the very end. So that sort of stinks, but I think I'm going to take this as a sign and make this without pockets. I know this is a really controversial thing, but something not having pockets doesn't really bother me because if you actually put anything in the pockets, then it will drag the fabric down over time and it isn't that great for the garment. And I'm also someone who won't leave the house without my phone, headphones, wallet, tampons, sunglasses, things that require you to carry a purse anyway. So not having pockets isn't a deal breaker for me. And when the fabric is as thin as this one is, I don't think it's a great idea for the integrity and life of the garment. A weird thing I noticed about this pattern is that the belt does not turn inward at any point. Like they don't make it long enough to allow it to fold inward like the front of the skirt does as well as the front of the bodice. So when I make this again, I'm going to extend the belt by two inches and sew it onto the bodice before turning this edge inward. So I won't end up doing the steps in their exact order, but I think it's going to give me a much nicer finish overall. I'm also going to bind this edge because it looks pretty yucky uh, just hanging out there on its own. So now I'm going to try this on and hopefully it will fit me and then we can get started on the real thing. Look at what I have on. I am so happy with how this turned out. I actually think it fits me really really nicely. It's a little tight in the waist but I'm also like not at my normal weight right now and I would probably wear this with more accurate foundations which do cinch in the waistline a little bit. So I think it's fine and I really like how it floats over 
my hips, so I'm probably not even going to let it out there. The shoulder fits me really well, the sides fit me really well, so the only alteration I'm going to make is to the belt so I can get a cleaner finish there. And I'm also going to cut the shoulder and the side with an additional half inch seam allowance so I can sew those as French seams and this will be more durable as I wear it over time. But yeah, really happy with this and I think the culottes are really cute too. Now I want to make a pair that is a lot shorter just to wear as normal shorts. I'm actually really tempted to make a pair of shorts to go with this shirt. I have this quilting cotton that has been living in my collection for a long time and I think it would look really cute with this shirt because they've got a lot of the same colors but I think that might be a little bit much. However, I'm still tempted so we'll see what ends up happening. So now I'm just going to mark where I'm going to add the additional seam allowance as well as drafting the facing for around the neckline but yeah this is it and I'm really happy with it and I can't wait to make the real thing so let's go ahead and get started on that. All right so the facing is officially made and now I'm going to take a little break let my camera charge and then when I come back upstairs we will get started on the real thing which I'm very very excited about and I'm still feeling sorely tempted to follow the lower half of this pattern again and make a cute pair of shorts to go with the jungle shirt but I guess we'll see how quickly the first piece comes together and then go from there. Now I am back to work and I got all of the pattern pieces cut out from my goldfish fabric. This did not go as smoothly as I had hoped. I'm basically adding a half inch allowance to all of the seams so I can sew them as French seams so it'll be nicely finished on the interior. And I kept forgetting to add the extra half inch so I had to recut things multiple times and I barely had enough fabric but I managed to make it work and I think everything is cut out properly. So now I'm going to go ahead and notch the pattern pieces and also iron them and mark things like the darts and the center line and anything that is going to help me in the assembly process later on. So let's go get that done. I went through all the pieces and made sure all the notches were cut and I also transferred any perforations into markings on the fabric. So that included marking the placement for gathers as well as the darts and anything like that. And then as they instruct me to do in step one, I pinned the darts on the bust as well as the collots. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these, though I'm probably going to change the color of thread first. And I think step two is doing up the shoulder seams and the side seams, so that will be our next task. So we have officially accomplished instruction number one, which applies to both the blouse and the play suit. And we have also officially accomplished, okay. We haven't accomplished all of step five, but we've gotten started. So I know I said I was going to follow their instructions really closely, but I feel like their instructions are a little bit backwards. They want me to turn this edge inward before sewing on the facing, even though if I sew on the facing first, then it will look a lot cleaner when it's finished. It also has me gathering the front independently from the back when it's gonna be way easier to gather those both after the side seams are done, and then I can attach the belt right afterwards. Doing this also allows me to sew all of the buttonholes at once as opposed to sewing three of them, then attaching the belt, then sewing another one. And it's gonna be way easier to do the neckline facing if I do it before sewing the side seams. So even though I want to show you all these steps to accurately follow this pattern, I'm also going to make changes just because those changes make a better finished product, and I think that's important too. So the next step I'm going to take is sewing the shoulder seams up with a French seam, and then we can attach the facing. So the shoulder seams are done. I sewed them as French seams, as I said. Here is the facing that I drafted. So they recommend using bias binding to finish the edge, but with all of the corners and the slopes, I thought it'd be nicer to draft a custom facing, so that is what I did and I'm going to pin this with the right sides facing each other and then fold it inward and hand stitch this edge down. So I will show you what that looks like when it is done as well. 
All right, so it's been a couple hours. I had to watch the dogs for a while, and then when I came back up to work, my desk was covered in mottled sunlight, and it would have been pretty much impossible to film anything and have it look halfway decent. So I decided to do some work in my own time and update you when the lighting got a little bit better, which is now. So I went ahead and sewed the facing in, and then I folded it inward and ironed it into position and whip stitched the folded edge down. So now it looks like this from the inside and this from the outside. And I repeated that process with the arm openings as well, though it is a little bit more puckered than the neckline since I used bias binding to finish the edge and turn that inward as opposed to a custom fitted facing. In hindsight I really wish I had drafted a facing for this edge too because I think it would have given a much cleaner less puckery finish but I guess I could always do that if I followed this pattern again in the future. Then I did these side seams up with a French seam though I'm not sure if you can tell from here and I gathered the bottom edge down slightly and then I attached the waistband. So I actually lined the waistband with some of the cotton sateen that I had left over for making the shirt just to give it more structural integrity since this material Material is very thin and silky and I covered the raw edge of the seam allowance with some lace binding just so it won't fray and break down over time. I also got the crotch seam for the culottes sewn up and this was done with the French seam as well. So the next step is going to be doing the inseam as well as the side seams and for this one you can see I've left the top extension open which is going to lap over and create the button closure and according to the instructions I'm supposed to add the buttonholes to the bodice and then add the buttonholes to this and then sew them together but I think I'm going to get a much cleaner finish if I do up this seam and then turn it all inward at once so now I'm just going to sew up a couple seams then we will have a functioning pair of collage. So here are the shorts all nicely assembled with French seams and I'm going to sew the top edge onto the waistband with a half inch seam allowance and then I'm going to bind the seam with some more lace binding and then it should start to come together and look like something wearable which will be really fun to see. So I went ahead and sewed the collats onto the waistband and then I bound the edge of the waistband with bias binding so it won't fray and I'm leaving this edge flat but I folded this edge inward and this is the edge that will have the buttonholes and overlap and then the placement for the buttons are marked onto this panel. So the next step is going to be sewing the buttonholes onto this side and sewing the actual buttons onto this side and once that is done the only thing left to do is hem this. So I am going to have to trim the hem a little bit. I'm not sure what happened because it was fine on my mock-up but the back panels ended up being a little bit shorter than the front panels and the front panels also slope in so they become slightly longer towards the inseam which I don't really like the look of. So I'm not sure how I'm going to trim this because it's pants so it won't fit on my dress form but it's going to be really hard to do it while I'm wearing it since it hits below my knee. So I might try hanging it on a hanger and see if I can do it that way. Otherwise it's going to be a real test of my flexibility trying to trim this while I'm wearing it. But regardless, I don't have to worry about that until after the buttons are done. There are three on this upper section, one on the waistband, and then two on the lower section. And I'm going to use a bright orange color of thread to sew the buttons, which I think will be really cute. And then I have white buttons that I'm going to use as buttons. Wow. What a beautiful description for me. Also, since I'm going to be filming over here, I will turn on this lamp and you will see how creepy it is. It like flickers before deciding that it wants to stay on. And it actually killed a brand new LED light bulb the other day too. So I think there's something wrong with it, but I've had it for a long time, so I can't return it. So I'm dealing with it. Also, there's a little sneak peek for some potential spring designs over there. So get excited for that or don't because I don't know if those designs are actually coming out yet potentially get excited about that. So 
So the buttonholes are done. I really like how this thread color looks on this fabric and the buttonholes turned out pretty well I think. I was a little worried with how thin this material is and the fact that I didn't stabilize it with anything that they might come out really lopsided but I think they look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these open using a pair of tiny scissors as well as a seam ripper. And then I'm going to sew the buttons onto the other side and then it will just be the hem that is remaining. My implements okay. for buttonholes are ready. I have teeny tiny swan scissors, a seam ripper, some fray check, some thread, and some buttons. Let's do this. <laughs> I think it turned out really cute. I haven't tried it on with the shirt yet, but it fit on my last fitting, so I don't think much will have changed since then. All I did was hem it, and I actually trimmed the hem while it was on a hanger, and then I pinned the hem in place, and I did a fitting, and it looked good, so I went ahead and sewed the hem, and I just stitched by machine with a running stitch three quarters of an inch away from the hem. A lot of these patterns do call for hand-stitched hems, but I like the durability of this better, and the visible top stitching doesn't really bother me on pieces from this period. So this is the finished ensemble, and then of course there is the super cute jungle shirt, which I made yesterday. Hopefully tomorrow I will be able to get a few pictures of these worn so you can see them in action. I'm really excited to add all of these pieces to my wardrobe and I hope you enjoyed seeing me put them together. I'm sorry that this video was a little bit disjointed. I planned on filming a lot more and following the instructions a lot more closely but it didn't go quite as planned uh, so I apologize for that but I hope it was enjoyable regardless and I am going to edit down this video because I filmed over 200 minutes of footage today. I have a completely full 62 gigabyte SD card and it's currently 10 o'clock and I have to get it all edited down tonight or at least roughly edited down tonight. So I'm going to end this video before I film anything else and I really hope you guys enjoy it and I shall talk to all of you very soon. I'd just like to say for the record that we are taking photos here and there is snow there that is not melting because it is 30 degrees out and windy and very very cold.